Okay, guys, Lukey is back. I've uh, taken some time away. We're back at Cherry Island. I got a new seven wood in the bag. I will show it to you maybe the next week. Hit it over this tree, playing from the wrong tees. Actually hit the tree and got lucky. Probably went on to the hazard. The opening hole is a par five, but it really is like a par four. When you can take seven wood and seven iron, that means two things. Playing from the wrong tees and it's a short hole. So that's the ditch you gotta go with. A lot of Cherry Island has visual intimidations. If you have trouble getting the ball in the air, this course is going to be hard. But the great value of the greens and a lower green fee, which was $15 for Twilight, makes this course worth it. Look at the birdie putt. Drano. So that was a great opening start to the course. The second and third holes are basically the same hole, except the third hole has a hazard down the right-hand side. This is a hole that just kind of gets you ready to drive. My alignment was really bad there. I was trying to cut the ball, and I think I need to work on alignment like I always need to. Put that into this bunker in the front. You won't really see it all that well, but it kind of runs out. And I mean, I made good contact. I just have trouble with bunker shots controlling the distance. I don't fully feel comfortable there. And I hit a good putt, but it just wasn't high enough and it was a little short so bogey from the front bunker kind of predictable if i hit the front bunker you're in trouble so another par four decent length and if you look down the right hand side basically you lose your ball if you hit the ball right left you're in the second fairway i hit a good little cut not mad at that as you can hear that was a very skinny sand wedge a new sand wedge i just picked up at kepler's golf the best place to buy golf clubs and gave myself everything I wanted on this hole. I gave myself an uphill putt. And I'd like to believe that the wind blowing was the reason that came up short. But I think I just didn't hit it. Once again, the fourth hole really demonstrates visual intimidation. If you have trouble making contact with the ball, a lot of Cherry Island's holes could be very frustrating for you. Because this hole is a hole where you have to flight the ball. I hit a 9 iron there. Might have been a pitching wedge. And just got it hole high, but it tricky green. I saw more break in it than there really was. And disappointing par, but at the same time, a par is good. Fifth hole, pretty tricky. It's dog leg left. I watched everyone hit slices, and I waited a while. Someone actually hit their shot on number four to where my tee box was. This is where I recovered, and I hit, an, um, like if I don't mind saying, a really good recovery from there. The ball actually hit and like plugged, which was disappointing because I was hoping it would hit and hop. And I was left with a really tough birdie putt. There's a big slope there and I hit a good putt. It just didn't quite have the pace to keep that line. We have the sixth hole, which runs parallel to the street, which I believe is Alberta Road. And one thing that you should note is if you go to the left on this hole and you love finding golf balls, there's a chance you could find a lot of golf balls. So if you're a big golf ball finder, that's something to take care of. I pride myself in my three wood. I had about 265 with a little downwind, and I really caught that. This is some of the hazards. So if you go right, there's water. If you go left, there's just the land of missing golf balls. And I actually hit it over the back of this green. It was a blind shot, so I had no clue what happened. And then I proceeded to do what I do when I do that is I basically had to chip, chipped into the wind, kind of stopped, and then I ended up making par, which was a little disappointing. Hole eight or hole seven is the signature hole at Cherry Island. This is the hole that a lot of people, I think, come to play. Strategy hole, the closer you go to the water, the more the closer the shot is. The further you go away from the water, the longer the shot is. I pulled it, so I had about a buck 90. I hit a six iron, and I actually hit it really well. This is the bridge. This is the water. It's a major risk-reward hole. Hit this chip. Didn't get it close enough. I thought I filmed the putt. Didn't. I left with a bogey. But that's a pretty friggin' hard hole, and it's a pretty fun muni hole because there's a lot of thought that goes into it. So you have to really kind of pick your club carefully and watch the wind. Number eight is another, probably one of the better holes on the course because it takes advantage of that same pond and has a big green. 
and it's just a strategic shot where you need to kind of hit about 145 yards to the pin uh missed out left trying to nuke probably a nine iron in there and got up and down hit a gap wedge chip that i like the tempo on and then i hit a good putt once again guys don't judge my feet my feet are really really bad in this video so it's great to be back vlogging because i can see some of my flaws it's like i don't trust my hips or my swing plane and i'm like trying to overcompensate for coming over the top it's what it kind of looks to me at this point so i hit two three woods that first three wood kind of felt floaty the second three wood felt pretty decent and I was really proud of this because I had to keep this ball kind of low. I hit a 9-iron and I tried to flight it down. And it actually did what I wanted. I just didn't have the right alignment. But it was still nice to hit a shot that was the exact distance I wanted to hit it. And even though alignment was off, it was a hard shot where the wind was kind of working into me. And I was proud of that. And then I got my 2-putt. So pretty good on that. I guess I'll take this time right now to basically explain that I didn't film hole 10 because I played through a group. So I played through a group and because I played through a group, you're not going to see hole 10. To me, that's one of my, um, one of the holes on this course is a par three. It's not nearly that exciting. So yeah, there you go. This weird bit of footage will be that. And now you can see my shot on hole 11, which there is a great story. I really hit that drive really, really well. So I don't know what happened, but I couldn't find my ball. So I hit this 58-degree um, wedge. And then my ball was literally where this camera was. So I think it hit the cart path and was like 15 feet from the green. And that totally threw me off because like I was looking for my ball and the people that I just played through were kind of in the fairway and I had two really good looks at birdie and I missed both of them which was a bummer so keep that in mind if the wind is with you and you hit a cut especially from the white tees but probably from the blue tees like this whole play is ridiculously shorter than I expected it to uh 12 par 5 really bad swing tried to draw a driver that's never a good idea ended up in the other fairway had to just hit a pitching wedge to just get it over the trees and then i really love this view so i think that was about a nine iron or a pitching wedge into this and if that had a lake that would just be such a cool hole and got on in reg and once again it was just a day where i didn't feel like the putts were going in it could have been the wind too because it's really hard for me to putt in the wind if i'm not doing it day after day it's like another variable but left with a par uh, this par three that kind of goes by like the running trails over here, just a real distance control. Do you see the swirl of that club? That was a little twirl. Love to see it. Pulled it, and then this is so class. That was such a good flop shot, and I thought you'd be able to see the pin, but I lipped out, and that almost dunked. So up and down for par. Love to see it. Love to see me prospering. So... Par 5, this is a beast of a hole right here. So you can cut the corner if you want, but it's kind of like Edgewood where if you cut the corner, you got to really know the line you take. I hit the middle of the fairway, and then from the middle of the fairway, I tugged on that 3-wood just a tiny bit, so it went a little bit went a little bit to my left. Hit a tree and got extremely lucky it was in play. I totally thought this was going to be out of bounds or in the hazard. And then I'm really working on with these chip shots to have good tempo, to just be very rhythmic with it. And then this is so disappointing, where you basically have a chance at a very doable birdie. And I just kind of got up and out of it very quickly and made par. A fun strategic hole for if you're not a long hitter, this is only about 300 yards. The key to this hole is keep the ball in play. As you can tell, it's very narrow, the driving area. You can actually drive past the fairway if you're not careful. Once again, I hit my 7-wood and then did not love the turf there. Bad turf interaction and fluffed a lob wedge. Hit my chip to here, and then this was the redeeming saving grace of this hole in which 
I rolled the rock into the cup. So that was a good feeling. Not great to fluff it. On my way waiting, I walked into those hazards and found one of these 50-50 balls. So I played this hall with the 50-50 ball. Absolutely hated the visual distraction of it. And then I was done with it. So this is a par 3. It's kind of a plain Jane one. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of plain Jane. I put a bad stroke on it. Said it was about like 170. I think it might have been into the wind. I tried to get a 7 iron there. was super short. Hit a good chip, and then I hit this putt way too hard, ran it by bogey. It's always a hard hole because it's a weird number for me, and I don't have enough experience at that course. 17, monster drive from me into the wind. Uh, just really, really accurate drive, which like if I play Ansel Hoffman, which I'm hoping to play in the coming weeks, just like film Ansel Hoffman again, those are the kind of drives I'm going to need to be able to just move the ball around and stuff there and then gap wedge a little short but I also think I was trying to tug on it not tug on it so it's more controlled strike and then left with par final hole 18 is a really good muni finishing hole where you have to hit over a hazard there's a tree in the way there's a bunker in the way a lot of strategic elements really really friggin fun so I hit a good three wood which left me a good 54 degree wedge sand wedge really liked that stroke I put on that it's absolutely fire and left myself an uphill putt but I think I put a little bit of cut spin on that and it was just nasty so subscribe to the channel if you don't already hit the thumbs up button please leave a comment where I should play next